record yeah. on this computer. We are recording. All right. All right. Hi, everyone, and thank you once again for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me I have Sharon and Hank Uloff with me. Sharon and Hank Uloff are business coaches, authors of six best selling books. They hold small business breakthrough boot camps. I like the alliteration there. Several times a year and hosted 243 episodes of a weekly radio show. They focus on marketing, sales, back office systems, and human resources, the, f- the four areas where most business owners say that they struggle. Sharon and Hank, welcome to the podcast. Well, welcome. Thank Thanks you. for having us, Michael. Absolutely. Glad to have you guys here. Uh, let's dive right into the questions here. Question number one, um, why did you guys become coaches? Clients were asking for it. Really. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it was kind of an evolution. Uh, going back to the beginning of our business, uh, I came from advertising, public relations, marketing, and I worked for a company that put logos on stuff. And clients would start saying, okay, you're selling us all this stuff. Can you show my, my employees how to use it? Do you have a program for that? Sure, why not? <laughs> put together a program for that and, and show them all how to, how to go through trade shows and set up trade shows and use promotional products and trade shows. And And the follow-up afterwards. Exactly. (laughs) And um, did that for a bunch of clients. And they all said, hey, that was really good. Best sales ever through our trade shows. What else you got? What do you mean? Well, (laughs) well, it it goes back to when your your basic marketing plan, find out what they need, go get it and sell it to them. That's really, you know, how it all works. And the company name at the time was set up to do just that sort of thing. After a while, when you're in the promo business, you get kind of tired of of telling people, yes, I can't put your logo on that. And it became more fun doing the, you know, ancillary stuff, the the, let's talk about who your target audience is and, you know, Mm -hmm. putting all of their marketing plans together. And as that became more and more fun, the, the coaching became more intense, deeper program. So really the company did what it was supposed to. It was supposed to evolve into that. And uh, didn't know at the beginning that's how it was going to evolve or where, but I knew it was going to go that way. For me, you know, starting in, in Boy Scouts and all of those other organizations, I always tended to be in the leadership, which meant in a training role and teaching has always been fun. So that's, that's how I became a coach. And Sharon has her own story. With <laughs> well, she came into in it. In the meantime, I was doing office and HR management and you know, thought he was the marketing guy. I don't know the marketing. And then I had a work-related injury. I was home for a year on disability. And in between physical therapy appointments, I got to eavesdrop on his conversations and went, wait a minute. Those are the same conversations I have in my office. So we, the aha moment was HR mm-hmm. for small business is really just internal marketing. So then, then he, it, it, you know, the stars aligned at the end of that year of disability. He happened to have a client that said, well, it's interesting because I need that office and HR stuff and I need the marketing sales stuff. Can you guys help me with all of it? And uh, yes, we can. And, <laughs> and we still are. <laughs> and the kicker really became, we know that coaches need coaches. You know, from, from Little League on, you know, why do we have a coach as well? They know more than we do. So we would look for business coaches that would coach us. And Mm -hmm. we went through several, never found a coaching program that, that, that was what we wanted. There was always Mm -hmm. the hands-on part tended to, it was lacking. So we started developing our, the kind of coaching program for our clients that we wish we could find. Mm -hmm. And, And that's, that's really how we ended up where we are today. We put our, we put a coaching program together. Oh yeah. We, we'd like to talk to our coaches you know, on a weekly basis. And uh, sometimes it's just easier to have your coach do it for you. And, mm-hmm. you know, especially if they have a skill so we can learn from it. And, you know, are they available through email and, you know, all sorts of different things. And that that's kind of how it evolved. And nice. here we are coaching today, on your show. Coaching, coaching by popular demand. <laughs> yes. And we've re- reached the pinnac- pinnacle. We're on your show. So there we go. <laughs> that's as good as... Oh, Hank, if this is as good as, good as it gets, then we need to have a chat after this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I read your press releases, man. You're a pretty awesome dude. I appreciate the thought, but <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, awesome. Moving on to, to question number two. What, what is it that you guys, what do you do in your coaching business that's unique? 
Well, it's kind of like what Hank said, right? We, we designed a coaching program that we wish we had, where we got, we get to talk to our clients every week where they, if they're a private coaching client, they get pretty much unfettered access to us, right? You get a 911 emergency, then you text us. You, mm-hmm. you, you can call. If we're on a call, we'll call you back, but right. So you have our cell phone number, you have email, you need, you need a, a graphics thing done. Uh, most coaches that we've interacted with, will go hire your graphic designer and tell them that this is what you need to do and then bring it back to me and I'll proof it before you actually put it up. Oh, good Lord. You know what? Hank just does it like rather than going all that back and forth, you know what? Just send me an email with what you are trying to do. Give me the concept and let me get you something that we can then bounce back and forth and let's cut out all that middleman. We, we had a Hank, client. That, yes. Real quick, real quick. Did, did I, did I detect a slight twinge when Sharon <laughs> spoke the words unfettered access? A little bit, a little bit. But, but, well, I'll, I'll explain that. We have two coach, two programs. We have our, our private coaching and we have our group coaching program. I said private coaching. I understand. <laughs> and and last year, we had a motto that was, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Wasn't that everyone's motto for 2020? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it has shifted this year to do what brings you joy. So we know that our programs are going to shift. We know that that more of our people are going into group as opposed to private coaching. And that's what brings us joy. But I, I the twinge was, you know, I the thought went through my head, you know, I'm still doing some of that graphic stuff, even for the, the group coaching program clients, mostly because graphics are fun. You know, mm-hmm. I've, I've, I'm trained in Illustrator and Corral Draw, and it is a lot of fun. And yeah, it is just faster if I do it. The, the story I was going to share was that we were driving across the California desert from LA to back to Arizona and got a, a 911 text from a client. I'm doing a presentation to, and she, he told us who he was presenting to. Can you look at my slides? Tonight. For tonight. Sure, why not? I have nothing to do while Sharon's driving. Send him to my phone. And I looked at his slides and he, he was talking about uh, financial planning. And he said, when, when our Anita Franklin died, she, and I'm looking at that, I said, wait a minute. So I was able to catch that he was going to tell you know a couple hundred people in a financial planning course that Anita Franklin died without a will. It's like, wait, don't you mean Aretha? So yeah, they get unfettered access and we cover their tail quite often with 911 calls. So that's <laughs> why we're a little bit unique. Yeah. Well, and the obvious that there's two of us, right? Yeah. And that's kind of the other obvious. There's two of us. You get two perspectives. Yes, male and female, but also, right, his background is in marketing and sales. Mine is in child development, office management, human resources. There's that differential too. So yeah. there's quite a bit that makes us unique, I think. That's great. That's great. And moving on to question number three, how do you guys find your clients? Really well. They're wonderful. Clients find you? <laughs> our, our clients are wonderful. That's how we find them. We find them to be delightful. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> we have several sales funnels. You know, say, let, let's talk in terms of, of coaching. We love speaking. We're not that great at it, but we love speaking. <laughs> and we do, uh, you know, pre-pandemic, we were on a different stage every month somewhere around the country talking about sure. marketing. That, that's always fun for us. Now, in the last year, we've done a hundred and something different webinars. Mm-hmm. So as a top of the funnel, that is wonderful for us. We still get most of our clients from word of marketing. You know, word of marketing, you know, people call it word of mouth. We call it word of marketing because we own wordofmarketing.com. So it's word of marketing. Most of our clients, they know that we pay affiliate money. So they sell out their friends and they say, (laughs) look, you know, misery loves company. You're coming into the program with me. And, you know, we train them all. So that, that's a couple of ways. What, are, what other ways? We also you? partner up with some other organizations, right? We, mm-hmm. What we do, what we teach our clients, who's your ideal client, where are they already gathering? Mm-hmm. Go there. So where are, who are our ideal clients and where do they gather? And they gather in other organizations, chambers of commerce or other sorts of, right, in their local area. And we partner up with them. Meet them where they're at. I like it. Yes. I get what they need. Go get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number four. What is the biggest challenge that you guys face as a coach, as coaches, rather? 
Rock, paper, scissors? No, go ahead. I'm, I'm I was gonna... <laughs> <laughs> It's our biggest challenge. You know, sometimes we do take on a little much. I'll, I'll give you an example. We're our, our 30th wedding anniversary is this July. Congratulations. Because of thank you. We're we're <laughs> very pleased. I, I had great modeling from my parents. They were high school sweethearts. They were married over 50 years together. So I had incredible modeling. I did not. And to, to celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary, our next book is going to come out and it's called Partners in Everything. It talks mm -hmm. about how you can work together in a relationship or, or just two people together and still have a successful business without killing yourself. Or the other person. And <laughs> one, of, one of our clients is a co-author and she's not a great writer. So I said, tell you what, we'll just record the interview with you and we will have it translate, you know, transcribed and we'll go through it. And I think I took on a little much there because it's like 20,000 words that I need to get down to 5,000 words. And, you know, it's stuff like that. We, we care a lot and we take on a lot and mm -hmm. yeah, but it goes back to, we want to be the coaches that we wish we could find. Sure. So putting out the, the extra time, the extra effort, it, it is a challenge, but we want to do it because the part we love most about coaching is when our clients are successful. And when that light goes on, it's like, I get it. It's like, mm -hmm. it's awesome. So, <laughs> so the, the challenge and the, and the greatest the thing yeah. we like about it, they, they walk hand in hand. Yeah. So what did you say? No, what was your I, idea? I, th I, no, I think you're right. I, I, don't, I don't know that I can top that. I think you're right. You know, Sharon, Sharon does uh, a, a lot of HR for some of our clients. And uh, we have a client that uh, is in a small town and has a, had a heck of a time keeping an assistant. And Sharon, with her H HR background, has, has volunteered, you know, I'll do the first screening of your of your people. Three times. That's a lot of work, <laughs> you know? And but hey it's the right thing to do yeah so the challenge like is knowing, knowing it's the right thing to do yeah that's great that's great taking going the extra mile above and beyond yeah well there isn't a lot of traffic on that extra mile <laughs> there, there truly isn't unfortunately yeah. not yeah, it's, a, it's an open it's an open part of road that you can drive 100 miles an hour on and there aren't even any cops there to write you a ticket but don't do that <laughs> in arizona because they are through every bush and they will find you <laughs> pro tips for anyone traveling through the southwest yes. oh yeah yeah don't drive 90 just outside of quartzite i'm not telling you why i'm just telling you that at mile marker 29 they're sitting off to the side of the road <laughs> just sharing that with you asking for a friend yes telling you yeah <laughs> yeah right on all right. I saw, uh, I saw the wheels. I saw the wheels spin as soon as I went past. I was like, the wheels were spinning. I went, oh man, I'm done. Regretted it before you could even. Yep. Have time to regret it. <laughs> I knew I lit up his radar. All right. So if you guys had a do-over, an opportunity for a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it took me ten years to convince her to come on board. <laughs> right. You know, I, I every day I was like, please, babe, don't go to work for that financial services company work with me instead don't go to work at that entertainment company where they don't appreciate you come work with me instead every day i'm telling you, michael i asked her every day for 10 years yeah that's the <laughs> what, story. The, no, what was the sure. what was the hesitation sharon what was the hesitation? <laughs> you, hey. that you know what? you know the, the hesitation was and and this is this is why we get it when when a lot of new businesses are are trying to take off when you own your own business you know, you, you sell or you starve kind of thing with Sharon had a real had She always had really good gigs. You know, companies paid her a lot because she's, re, you know, really good at what she does. So they didn't mm -hmm. want her to leave. So they'd say, yeah, you, you can have that race here. So giving up the, the definite for the freedom. And at some point, it just it just really became silly for us not to be partnered. And it's so much more fun that we get to do this together. You know, we don't have the, how is your day conversation <laughs> at the end of the day when we both get back, you know, and enjoy dinner together. We've been with each other all day. Sometimes we're in different offices or on different calls, but we're, we're she's my best friend and I get to spend the day with my best friend. And I'm so, I'm lucky, you know, I'm married way up and I get to hang with her. 
it's it's really kind of cool. Feelings mutual, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so right that, on, that was part of it. Um, I think I think we might have. I think we might have started our group coaching program earlier. Yeah. Uh, I think because we talked about it, we just yeah. didn't actually do it. Yeah, we're we're enjoying it a lot. It's it's really come on board in the last year, and Monday afternoons in our mastermind call because we we have them all on us on you know on the Zoom screen and we're going through and and handling challenges. Bam, 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 right across the screen. It's great. Sure. And, and it is a mastermind. So other people raise their hands and there's all sorts of great communication together. It's cool. I kind of wish we had started that years ago instead of just having our private coaching because it, it's it's fun and it's mm-hmm. wonderful to watch. Nice. Nice. These are great answers, guys. Now on to and they're the truth. Stuff. So that's the extra bonus. <laughs> We have no, we have no filter. You'll, you find that we don't have a, an on-screen persona and an off-screen. That's too much work. Yeah. It's really <laughs> hard. So I agree with Sharon on that. It's too much work. <laughs> and again, we, we saw that in some coaches. It's like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. There, there are a couple, we never, we felt we never knew the real person and, mm-hmm. and that's okay for them. It works for them. They're really successful. It Welcome. doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for us. No. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good for you. On to the bonus question. What is one book? What is one book that you recommend all your clients read? Besides ours? The Marketing Checklist <laughs> 2. Four ways to master your marketing. There it is. And if anyone would like a copy, send us an email. We'll we'll send it to you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's yeah, great. There, there are a lot of cool books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Think and Grow Rich from 1927. Napoleon Hill. It, it, we reference that a lot. Yeah, it's kind of the basis for for so many other positive mental attitude books and programs. You know, we'll see people that write an entire book on one of the thirteen rules, and yeah. it, and we found that we have a few that are favorite. We have we love the mastermind rule. You know, we put it into play. Get coaching. Go get coaching. Specialize as much as you can. You know, there's a lot of really good information there, and that desk. That book lives on my desk. The other two that, that, that we reference a bit is The Slight Edge mm-hmm. and The Compound Effect. Okay. I'm not familiar with those ones. Ooh. The, the, Sharon? <laughs> the Slight Edge, I, you know, I'd have to look it up. I think it, it's Burger, but don't hold me to that. I could be wrong. But it, The Slight Edge is definitely the title. I just, I'm not quite positive on the, on the author. But it's that, mm-hmm. sl- what's that slight, that slight edge? What's that little just that little adjustment. It doesn't have to really be a big adjustment. M- many small business owners think I have to make this big major pivot. And usually mm-hmm. it's a slight edge, yeah. mm-hmm. right? So that's that's the one. We had we had one client that two years ago, she was going into her, th- her second year with us. And, and every, at the beginning of every year, we, we have a sit down. You know, we take a full day with our private coaching clients and we go through what's what. And we now knew her business. And I said, okay, what about making this one change? And it was a simple thing to do, but she had to take a leap. She made, she made $40,000 extra profit from that one little change. And that's profit, not sales. Mm-hmm. And she's a not, she owns a nonprofit. So sometimes it's just that one little thing. And a lot of times we're afraid to make that one little change, let alone a big change. And the other part of that is if you have 30 minutes or if you know the power is going off in an hour, What's the one thing you got to get done now? Mm-hmm. And if you're not sure, you know, you have a call cancel, you know, somebody said, Hey, my, my kid just got the measles. I got to take her to the doctor, whatever. And now you find yourself with 30 minutes. Okay. The question is, what's the one thing I could do in my business right now that would make the biggest difference? That's the mm-hmm. other book, the one thing. Yeah, the one thing. But what's the one yeah. thing that if you did the one thing, it would make everything else either easier or unnecessary? Yep, that's a great one. That's Jay Papasan and yeah. Keller, I believe. Keller, I think it is Keller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keller and and then to, to yeah. answer your question, the compound effect is Darren Harvey. Nice. Right, that's consistency, doing that that thing over and over and over again. And you know, there's also the marketing checklist for sales, <laughs> 49 easy ways to improve your sales for professionals who don't like selling. Available for free if you send us an email. <laughs> nice. I think it's safe to say that most of us don't like selling. Most of us just want to focus on coaching. That was that was the 
that's why that yes. book is there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Very good. Very good. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Where can our listeners connect with you online? Well, there, there are a couple of ways. Easiest is our website, you know, ulofcreative.com. It's Y-U-L-O-F-F, Ulof Creative. That's where our blog is and all that. That's the base of our universe. And if you're one of those coaches that wants to get there faster and you want to know how to get there faster, if you go to howtogettherefaster.com, you get to book 30 minutes with us and we can talk about some of the principles we were talking about today to get you where you're going. Lovely. Sharon and Hank Uloff, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Coffee with Coaches podcast. And thank, thank you. you to our audience for tuning Thanks. in. Thanks, guys. See you soon.